Okay, one good way that we can also summarize our data is through graphical summaries. So let's just do data visualization. Okay, data visualization is very useful because it can help to summarize a large amount of data uh, almost in an instant where we can take these large data sets, compress them down into some visual, and be able to tell our story very quickly and very succinctly. Um, now, data visualization is not perfect. It's only one of our tools that, that we're going to be using, uh, but it is a very important one. Uh, now, some of these uh, types of graphics that I'm going to go through and talk about, uh, they're kind of like the baseline. Um, there are so many other ways that we can visualize data. Um, and I would highly suggest going on and looking at some of these unique ways uh, that you can visualize data. Uh, a quick Google search can bring up many, many new ways that you can do it just beyond like our basic pie and bar charts. But we want to go through those first because they are kind of the foundation. Once we have those mastered, then we can kind of get more and more unique. All right, so we're going to break our data visualization up into two groups. We're going to talk about our numerical data visualization and our categorical. So we're, let us start off with our numerical. Okay, and for this section, we're really going to focus on kind of like four main types of ways that we can visualize our numerical data. Uh, so uh, number one, is a histogram. Uh, the second one that we'll talk about is a box plot. The third one that we're going to talk about uh, is a scatter plot. And the fourth one is called stem and leaf. Uh, the stem and leaf one I particularly don't like, but I do include it because if you were to see it in literature or something, I would expect you to be able to actually read and understand what is going on. Okay, so let's start off with a histogram. So a histogram really is just a gra graphical representation of our uh, frequency tables of the bins and the frequencies, and we just plot it on an x and y axis. So for a histogram, let's go ahead and do just kind of a simple example. So we can plot this out, and down on the bottom we're going to have our bins. Uh, so if we have discrete variables, this is handy. It's just you know going to be like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. If we have bins, it will be the actual kind of like bin sizes for how many fell into this bin, how many fell into this bin, and we plot it. So if this is the bins, then this is either the, the like frequency, which would just be the raw counts, like how many 10 people are in this group, 15 people are in this group, or you can do it with the relative frequency. And that would be like 10% of the, of the group fell in here, 15% went in this bin. And so what you wind up getting is something you know, that might look like something that, that looks like this, where we would see the frequencies of how many times did people land in these individual bins. And you know, this bin might be something you know, this specific one might be 0, 5. And we're doing this in steps of 5 all the way up. And that is a histogram. Histograms are wildly useful because it also lets us see kind of the shape or where is most of the data kind of clumped around and where is it less frequently uh, observed. And once again, you can do this with either the frequency, just the raw counts, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, how many times we saw it. Or it could be percentages from 0 to 100, and we could see what percent of the time did each of those bins, um, or what percent of the sample fell in each of these bins. So that's a histogram. Histograms, super useful. They're kind of like a, a bread and butter. You see them all the time. All right, so number two we've got what are called box plots. Now box plots are handy too uh, because it helps us kind of show where the 
middle 50% of the data is. And it, so it breaks our data up into four pieces, and we call them quartiles. So let's go ahead and draw out kind of what a box plot would look like. So we'd have kind of a single value here. We'd come out of ways. OK. So this is what a box plot would actually look like. So I'm going to go and label a few things on here. So here we'd have some sort of number line. So maybe this is 0, and we're going all the way out to, I don't know, 100. This is our minimum. This is our maximum. And then we have these three values in here. So this value right here is our median. And this guy is called the first quartile. And this one is called the second quartile. And we abbreviate them as Q1 and Q3. Now we call them quartiles because it breaks the data up into 25% chunks. So we can say that 25% of the data and let me just throw in some numbers here. We'll have this be 5, that be 20, we'll have that be, or maybe that should be more like 30, I don't know, 30, that be 40, we'll have that guy be 55, and I'll we'll have that guy be 70. I know it's not perfectly to scale, but just bear with me. So we would say that 25% of the data lands between 5 and 30. We could say that 25, the next 25% of the data lands between 30 and 40, the next 25 lands between 40 and 55, and the next 25 lands between 55 and 70. Okay, this is super useful because it can help show us like where is the data, and specifically a lot of times we're interested in this right there, and that's the middle 50%. That's the middle 50%. And when we take Q3 minus Q1, that is known as the IQR, or inner quartile range. When we report just these five numbers, so let me kind of circle them real quick. We've got the min, the Q1, the median, Q3, and the max. All of those combined are known as the five number summary. Oh, yeah, and you're probably wondering, like, okay, how exactly do we get each of those values? Well, this minimum and maximum, that one's pretty easy. There are, there are some exceptions to that, and I'll talk about those in just a second. And this, the median is the, probably the easiest to find. We find the median by finding the middle number. If we were to line them up in ascending order, it's the middle number. And then if we looked at from the median to the minimum, this is that the median of that lower 50%. And the Q3 is the median of the higher 50%. Now, that, that's kind of like really simplifying what's going on. There's actually several ways that you can actually calculate the five number summary. Um, there are some more sophisticated ways and some less sophisticated ways. Uh, honestly, what we're going to be doing is we will be using our software package. And whatever our software package kicks out for our five number summary, that's what we're going to, to use. Uh, but just kind of in theory, that's what's happening. We're breaking these up into 25% chunks. Now. Uh, sometimes you will also see in these five number summaries is you'll see these little guys out here with like a little circle. And you might see a couple of them. And those are what we called outliers. Let me label that real quick, outlier. And it has a definition. So an outlier is considered 1.5 times the IQR And we either need to, uh, so this would, hold on. Let me write this equation out a little bit better and not have it written at an angle. OK, so once again, outlier. It's either going to be Q1 minus 1.5 times the 
IQR. IQR, remember, it's this middle 50%, which is Q3 minus Q1. Or it's Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR. So you can have outliers on the upper end, and you could have outliers on the lower end. So the, the box plots are handy. They're able to kind of show us real quick some graphically where the majority of our data is lying. And if we have multiple groups, like we have men and women, we could separate them out into men and women, and we could compare the box plots one to another. They're, they're very helpful to quickly, um, quickly graphically summarize our data. So those are the box plots. And it's another great one that we can use with our numerical data. Um, the third one, uh, we will get way more into depth later on in class, but just a scatter plot. So if we have measured both like height and weight of people, we could plot those on a two-dimensional plot. And we could do something like this, where this would be height, this would be weight, and we could do something like this and we could plot those data points. So generally, now as you get taller, you generally weigh more. Anyhow, so that's generally a scatter plot. I'm just going to leave it at that for right now, and we can dive into more of it later. All right, the last one that we have are stem and leaf plots. And as I said before, I don't particularly like stem and leaf plots, uh, but I'm going to put them up just so that we have uh, a reference for them. So a stem and leaf plot, I'm sorry, I'm going to kind of move over here and draw up in this area for our stem and leaf plot. But a stem and leaf plot is kind of, it's, also, it's another graphical representation of our histograms, kind of. And just let me give you an example. So let's suppose uh, that we are, that we do a survey, something like how much money do you have in your wallet? And we get something like this where we have this line and I'm going to put a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. OK, so the 0 represents we're going to have from 0 to $9. 1 is going to be from 10 to $19. 2 is going to be from 20 to $29, etc. as we go our way down. So now what you do is for every single observation, you put in its numerical value. So I had two zeros, I had a 1. I had a five and two sevens and a nine. All right, then the people who had one, I had there's somebody who had 10, who had 11, 13, and 15. For 20, we had 23 and 29. 30, we had 30. And 40, we had 47. OK. So we can see like how many people actually took this survey. We use 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 people took the survey. I can tell you exactly how many people had 7 in it. There are two people who said that they had $7 in it. I can say there are no people who had $3 in their wallet. I can say for between 10 to 19, there are four people. So like there are ways that this can summarize. Let me label this again, stem and leaf. And it's called stem and leaf because this right here, kind of the tens position was called our stem. The ones are the individual leafs. Um, I, the problem with this is like when we get into big data sets, let's suppose that we have a data set of maybe 500, 2,000 uh, data points. Uh, you would have to have an individual number for every single point. And it just gets ridiculous. So for small data sets, it's, I guess it's OK. Uh, but I would just as soon prefer to do a histogram. A histogram can well handle uh, very large data sets and very small data sets uh, as, as well. So I much prefer the histograms. Uh, I don't even think that, I mean, we don't cover much more about stem and leaf uh, outside of this. But I did want you to know that if you saw it, could you figure it out and how to read it? So this is the data visualization for our numerical uh, our numerical data, kind of, kind of the basics, uh, but there are a lot more and a lot more complicated graphics that, that we can uh, get into as well.